Hi, welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. Today I want to demonstrate for you something that I've been asked many, many times over the past few weeks to share with you, which is my wirework spider. So here's one that has been made with some amber and he's just hanging around on a long strand of spider thread. And then here's an all wirework variation crafted in raw copper wire. Now the web of dreams I showed you last week, I shared how to uh, how to put that together. So if you've got some of those that are hanging around and you've decided not to put beads on, then you can obviously put spiders on. We are at the moment coming up towards October. So there are certain people who have requested that I can help you out with some spiders. So trigger warning, there are no real spiders in this video, but there may be shapes that might concern you if you are slightly arachnophobic. No real spiders though. Okay, so we're going to work today with some raw copper and if you join me down on the board we'll have a look at what we're going to achieve. So here's my spider that I've made with a lovely elongated drop shaped cabochon of amber and a single bead. You can also create the same design and instead of setting a cabochon in position you can just do a little bit of back and forth weaving. This one has been wired onto one of my Web of Dreams designs and I shall probably be wearing that over the next few weeks. So this is what we're going to look at creating today. There are just a couple of pieces of wire to create this point this piece rather sorry and some fine gauge wire as well now this is one millimeter gauge raw copper wire and we'll also be using some 0.4 millimeter gauge which i've just got over here so the first thing that we're going to do is to create a pair of pairs now these are referred to as u-pins because they look just like the staples that you put fences together with so what you'll see is that there are two pairs they're approximately the same size one is slightly larger than the other it doesn't really matter that can be down to your artistic license so it's two sets of two u-shapes and one fits inside the other now that getting it to sit neatly takes a little bit of um, just fiddling around with your pliers so I've got some sections of wire here they're around about three inches seven and a half centimeters in length and this is the one millimeter gauge wire again so I'm just going to grip hold of the end there for a second and just rub that between thumb and forefinger to get some smoothness and heat I'm going to pick a position which I believe is a little bit off to one side. I'm going to draw that up. You can see that the end is slightly kinked there. So we're just going to draw that into position. And I've taken that past the right angle. So I'm going to bring it back now, like so. And I'm going to go slightly wide on this one and draw that up. Now that's just an estimate. So that's actually worked out reasonably well. What I need to do here is to get some nice sharp bends. So I'm going to take that past the 90 degrees and then work it so that it comes back. And then just to create that nice little, very, very sharp U shape. So I'm going to do that four times. And what I'm going to create is a little bit of a nest. So I've got two U shapes, one sits inside the other, another two U shapes, one sits inside the other exactly the same technique as we just used but we're going to make four of them like so i've also got a, another section of wire here which we're going to use to make the body of the design when we come to it so i'm just going to pop these out of the way exactly the same technique to create those shapes now if i bring you some that i created earlier and then hammered so you can see the basic idea of what we're going to create so you've got an upper segment and a lower segment and these really don't take terribly uh, much technique it's just a case of fiddling with them until they aesthetically please you so what i'm going to do is at the top there's a slightly different technique the inside u-pin on the bit that i've elected to be the front end has got a slightly higher section of wire before we take that bend I'm just going to push that wire over and show it to you up here. What I might do is just push that over to the side so it's less distracting. Bring this back into the middle. So you can see that we've created a shape on the one side, which is just a, another right angle bend. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side and try and get that reasonably symmetrical. So this sits inside of the two i'll just show you that that one fits around the outside so this second one we want to take our bend going outwards 
slightly lower down. So I'm just going to push that all the way over, flip the design and then repeat like so. And what we're looking to achieve is for those to nest. It doesn't matter if they're really close together or slightly further apart, as long as the narrower of the two U-pins sits inside the slightly broader one, like so. So what I'm going to do is just show you on one side now. I'm going to bring that angle up ever so slightly. I'm going to start bending that a little bit. And then about a third of the way from this angle that we've created to the tip, I'm going to pinch very, very firmly and then draw a hard angle all the way back and then draw that back out again. Now this gives us a little bit of an angle to play with. You will need to remodel that wire so it sits how you want it to sit. And what I'd like to do is try and keep a little bit of symmetry. And I'm just going to open that bend back up and then put a lovely curve on here. So I've taken that and mangled it slightly, so I'm just going to straighten that up. Now you don't have to hammer the wire as I have done here. You can leave it completely smooth. So if I bring this piece into position, we see that these wires aren't hammered at all. But you can see that we've got the two sections, one sitting inside the other, just the same shape as this, with a bit of a bend and then a nice curve coming in. So on the second section underneath, we're going to take it a little bit further out than that first bend we put in. So if I just pick that up at the point that I want to bend it and then take that around, grip that from underneath and then we're going to put another curvature in the top. Now this does take a little bit of time just to get that to sit how you want it to, but I would be really happy with that shape that's forming right there. So on the lower side, I'm looking to start with the inner of the two. So you've got the outer, it's the broader one. I'm just going to pop that there for a second. And then you've got the inner as well. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm really happy with those shapes, that they're nice and sharp. And then I'm going to draw that outward slightly. Do that on both sides just so that you can see that we're looking to achieve some kind of symmetry. It doesn't need to be perfect because you won't necessarily see these junctions in the end. Now about a third of the way along, I'm going to again put quite a sharp bend. What you can do is use that as a bit of a measuring stick if you want to, give yourself an idea of how to get that symmetry. Grip the wire and then push that across and you can see that you've got a reasonable amount of symmetry just there. And if you've missed it, you can just remodel that slightly. And then again, we're going to open those back out and put some long gentle curves on. So this, if you remember, was the inner of the bottom two U-pins. Grip hold of that segment, push it back out, and then start getting a bit of a, a smooth glide around. And that will sit inside the other piece like so. And for the, for the outer of the bottom segment, I'm going to again draw that out to the side around about a third of the way from that bend to the end. I'm going to put another angle in and then grip that, push it back out and put a bit of a curve on it again. So it's really a case of just sitting that down until you think they look how you would want them to look. You can, of course, pause the video at any time and just look and see if they're matching up with what your expectations of spider legs might be. So that's what I'm going to work to. And that's approximately where we're going with this lower segment right now. So again, you come a third of the way along Put a little bend in it and then the lower section has that lovely curvature you can open that out a little bit if you need to and just sit them into position now what i'm going to do is just play with that until it sits and it really doesn't take much effort because it's one millimeter gauge wire you don't have to work too hard to get that to sit exactly how you want it to you can give that a bit of a smooth round if it's not working for you and just get it to behave make it behave <laughs> like so, until you get the shapes that you're looking for. Now, I'm not an expert in what spiders are supposed to look like by a long chalk. I have just gone primarily by cartoons. 
because I like cartoons, I like a bit of Spider-Man, I like a bit of Marvel, I do enjoy my superhero films. So there is an element of kind of hearkening towards the superhero shape of this spider, if it looks familiar. It's not a copy by any shape or means, but it's just the way I like it. So if you come back down to the board, I'll show you very quickly just how to hammer one of these sections if you choose to. I'm just going to bring the block into position for a second, and I'm just going to pick one of these pieces. Let's say that this is exactly how I want it to appear. I'm really happy with all the curvature. And what I would do is I would push that down into the block really hard. And what I'm doing is creating a little bit of a spade type design at the end there, the paws as I like to think of them. Before I come back and again I'm going to push down really firmly into the block. just to support that shape and make sure I'm happy with how that's coming together. And you can flip that if you want to and make sure that it sits exactly in the position that you choose. So what I would probably do is just add these up every now and again. That seems to be coming in a little bit. So what I might do is just open that out, tease it gently open until that sits exactly how I want it to. And that actually, I think, looks quite attractive. So I'll do that with all four pieces until I end up with something very similar to this. As I say, you don't have to hammer the pieces at all. If I show you again, this particular piece is unhammered altogether. It's quite uh, jointed in places and it's very, very smooth and fluid. It's quite beautiful, really. Or if you wanted to go for the hammered look, you do have this option. I think the piece that I'm wearing is hammered. Made it very many years ago so I can't actually remember. <laughs> yep so that one is hammered so you'll see that the light reacts slightly differently off the metal in this piece so it's entirely up to you. you. Come back down to the board I'll show you how to attach these all together. So I'm going to use some 0.4 millimeter gauge wire and I'm going to cut around about 10 inches or so. What I'm going to do is move the lowest and the highest pieces out of the way to begin with so that I've got the two central most pieces and I'm going to hold them very firmly in my non-dominant hand with a tiny gap between them. I'm finding the middle of my section of fine gauge wire. I'm going to wrap around twice trying to maintain a very small gap between them like so. I wanted to come together a little bit there so I'm just going to push that apart until they sit exactly how I want them to. So the next thing that I would do, draw that section around. I'm going to take this tail of wire and I'm going to post it down between those two sections so that I've wrapped twice around those middle ones and then down the centre and away. I'm going to drop in the lowest most piece of my spider and then wrap twice around both of those sections like so once and twice and then what I'm going to do is come up between the two lower ones like so just push this over slightly and then going to wrap around the upper of the lower two and the lower of the upper one I'm going to wrap that twice before coming up between them again. Let me just pull that out of the way. And then I'm going to drop the uppermost piece in to position, like so. And I'm going to wrap twice around those two pieces there. So twice around the top and then back around. That's gone slightly awry, so I'm just going to push it into position. And I will show you if you take a little bit more time, what that will look like. This piece hasn't been hammered, but it has all been neatly stuck together. And I finished off with a wrap around one of the central pieces twice, and then I've given it a squeeze. Now you could theoretically very gently hammer, but I think I've got more control just by squashing that together. So if you take a slightly closer look, let's get that in focus for a second. 
you can see that there's two wraps around two pieces of wire at a time. It means that everything is still quite jointed. If I drop that back down and refocus, hopefully, <laughs> there we go. You'll see that that is all ready to have the upper segment installed. So I'll just show you again what we're looking to create. The body section is a cabochon of amber. It's been heat pressed and formed into this lovely, very elongated drop shape. And next up, we're going to be making this form, which looks a tiny little bit like a goddess. So I'm just going to pop my spider out of the way. That fifth piece of wire we had earlier is what we're looking to work with now. So I'm just going to give that a quick warm between thumb and forefinger. This actually builds up really quickly. So I'm going to find the middle point. This is about four to five inches long. And to create quite a sharp point, which you do need to just kind of fiddle with your fine tip pliers to get that point. Open up from the point, and of course you'll have to fit this to your particular cab, but I'm just going to create a smooth swoosh going one way, flip the design over, a smooth swoosh going the other way, and then just move that until it sits approximately how you think your cab is going to fit. So I've taken it too wide and too short, so it's really easy just to modify that until it fits your particular gemstone. If you don't wish to use a gemstone, your alternative is to just do a little bit of back and forth weaving, a basket weave. I've just done three on either side on the frame when we've completed it. And that's what that looks like without any additional legs or framework to it so it's very very simple basket weave inside the frame but I'll show you how to make the frame anyway so that needs to be a little bit further up and then we're going to grab our round nose pliers and bring those together at the top of the piece to generate space for a bead to sit so I'm going to close that up and then reopen it slightly and what you need to focus on here at this point is making sure that your cab is still going to fit inside. Once you've done that and you've created a nice place for your bead to sit, come back in with the round nose pliers, take the tails over to make those little jaws or antennae, however you want to think of them. And then we're just going to trim away like so. And you should end up with something like this. Obviously, you can spend a little bit more time and get that to fit your cab really neatly. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to sit the cabochon inside the frame we've just created. And we're only going to use 0.4 millimeter gauge wire to hold it in position. So I'm going to remove the cab for a moment. I'm going to take a section of my 0.4 mil gauge. I'm going to use about 12 inches, I think, which is probably more than we need. But when you do end up with more than you need, you have a little bit of a tail at the end, which you can use to adhere your design onto your final piece. So you could hang it from your web of dreams if you wanted to. So it doesn't actually matter if you have a little bit of an excess. So what we're going to do to begin with is find the centre of our approximately 12 inches or 30 centimetres of wire. And I'm going to lay that fine gauge wire underneath. And I'm going to spin twice around the outside on both sides. So I'm looking at around about maybe halfway up the body, maybe slightly less than halfway up the body. And again, I'm just wrapping around the outside frame twice. So swoosh of wire underneath wires fine wires coming up and away i'm going to drop the cab into position so it sits on top of that wire and i'm going to draw my fine gauge wire in an x formation over the back of that amber cabochon and very very quickly take the tip of that wire pass it around the frame that we've just created once and twice and then just take it across the back so exactly the same on the other side Take the tip of the wire, pass it around the frame that we've created, like so. Make sure that the frame stays below the amber cabochon once and twice. Flip over to the back and then you will cross those wires over however you see fit. Go back and forth a few times and what you will end up with, oops, I'm getting attacked now. What you will end up with is a way to house your cabochon inside that frame. 
you will end up with a residue of one of these wires which you can then take up to the section in the centre and you can of course modify this slightly as you need to if you need to as you go along and then you can take the tail of the wire to drop the bead in position and then just tie off around one of the antennae so I'm not going to go over and over the same technique. What we're looking to do is secure the cabochon into the frame we've created. And I've gone for little X shapes because I like Xs on designs like this. Lends an element of symmetry. And I think it's quite attractive as well. You can go for straight lines. However, it ensures that your cabochon isn't going to pop out. If you are going to use the zigzag or basket weave, it's still quite effective. You don't need a gemstone or a resin or any other beautiful organic material to create your spider. You can just use wire if you so desire. The final part of the trick, if you come back down to the board with me now, you can adhere your spider onto the web. So I had a tiny little bit of wire left over from the tail end of my zigzagging. And all I did was wound around four times at the top there and just allowed the spider to sit. Now, obviously, if this was everyday jewellery, that wouldn't be as secure as I would like. So if I was going to wear this all the time, I would take some finer gauge wire and just at little points like the little chap's elbows here and here, I'd make sure that he was very securely attached to his web of dreams. If it is going to be decor for around the house, you can very, very simply have him spinning away from the bottom of whatever decoration you're using and it can just hang so this particular one sits on a sterling silver web which does have some little amber beads and that sits above my computer and keeps me company every day and he sat there for several years now and all i've done is given him a little bit of coiling on the bottom of that wire that came out of the very end of the design and I just took that through the web like so and he just hangs he just hangs around and he has a great old time so I hope that you've enjoyed the spider to go on your web of dreams or to go wherever you want it to it would look amazing on a fascinator on a hairpiece as a brooch obviously if you are wearing it as jewellery you do need to be slightly more conscious of adhering that really really firmly to whatever it's going to it could go to a backing it could go to fabric it could go to a, a coconut leather or something whatever you want to do with it just make sure he's well and truly stuck down I'm saying he could be a she could be anything spider he can be whatever he wants to be so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today I've had a lot of fun creating so so many of these over the years um they do they are all over my house <laughs> have yourself a lovely day no matter what you're doing and i look forward to seeing you again very very soon i will be coming back on facebook every other monday 8 p.m for my regular facebook live that's british time bye for now and do take care